If you look anywhere in the world at this time, what you find is a lot of tension and conflict. At this time, we find ourselves at a breaking point. Our present day method of agriculture is a very large cause of many of the problems that we're facing. Intensive agriculture, which is the massive exploitation of the earth, is the problem. We need to break down the monolith of agribusiness and redistribute it to a network of farmers who live in apartment dwellings, as a matter of fact. I'm on a mission to find these solutions, and we're going to find them with people who are present day farmers and people related to the farming industries because so much of our existence revolves around their activities. We're going to talk with people that are doing it the old way, people that are doing it the new way. And the new way is actually the old way. My name is Ken Armstrong. I'm the owner of Ouroboros Farms here in Half Moon Bay. We own a commercial aquaponics facilities, which is one of the largest facilities in the United States. One of the problems with agriculture nowadays is the majority of our agriculture is done through artificial nitrogen-based fertilizers. That methodology is causing some, some issues, uh, particularly fertilizer runoff. That is one of the major contributors to the dead zones that we have in the oceans, these areas where nothing can live. And so aquaponics is one of the, the solutions to the future, in my opinion, um, because it's a natural. It's, this, is, this is a natural way of growing. We are creating a living ecosystem. This is a river, lake, stream ecosystem that we're doing in a controlled environment and using the natural power of nature to grow this incredible quality produce. Without a doubt, the time is now. As, as our climate is changing, as um, the resources that are available to us are being diminished, as weather patterns are shifting, I think aquaponics is really essential to growing in the future uh, because of the reasons, because you can grow an enormous amount of quality faster with fewer resources, in particular water resources, um, it's really the most efficient methodology of growing a large quantity of the produce that we actually consume. This is the best, most efficient methodology of doing that as far as time required, energy resources, and water resources as well. It's a, an important thing that students learn about aquaponics is because I think it's the ultimate model of sustainability. The plants are cleaning the water for the fish, the fish are providing the nutrients for the plants, so you don't have to provide fertilizers and those kind of things, so you're dramatically you know, reducing the amount of resources that you need for plants and fish, and you're saving a lot of water in the whole process. So the idea of doing aquaponics is, is about 99% more efficient with water than traditional soil farming. Basically, if you got room for a barbecue at your house, then you got room to do a small aquaponic system. Well, I'm Robert Henriksen, and back in the 70s, I joined a team of entrepreneurs from Berkeley, and we built the first pilot farms growing spirulina in Imperial Valley, and that led to the development of Earthrise Farms, which became the largest spirulina farm in the world, and is still going today. A superfood is a food that's nutrient dense, that packs a whole lot of nutrition and health benefits in a small area. It's easy to digest, it has wonderful health benefits, and if we can incorporate a superfood into other foods in our diet, we'll be a lot healthier. Spirulina consumes carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. It's that simple. There's no toxic byproducts at all. So the idea of microfarms is to grow spirulina in greenhouses where people live and do that to build a local market with local products that are fresh. And uh, this is the time for algae to be one of those products like microgreens and herbs and things like that that people can grow profitably locally. California alone is, has a bigger agricultural system than most of the countries in the entire world. And so if you're telling me that one of the biggest agricultural units in the entire world's number one crop is marijuana, then what you're telling me is that's, that's a lot of impact there. I think that the state regulation for medical marijuana and for Prop 64 is, is, is going decently. And as long as we can preserve a uh, space for small businesses and new players, then I think it's going to be successful. And the social moray, the social taboo says, naughty, naughty, don't touch the reefer. Well, now it doesn't say that. And so now these people can say, hey, you know what? I have no stigma, and I'll look at it from a different perspective, and hopefully I look at the producers of it in a different perspective. And it allows us that are producers to operate in a more transparent manner, so we can start to really utilize all the different things that let businesses function on a healthy, sustained level. And I think that it has an ability to transform the world we live in completely. 
What we learn from these experts are how to find the simple ways back to our source through the use of ancient agricultural methodologies that will bring us back to a place of purity. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about us, check us out at therootstock.org.